Take it away. Okay, so my last presentation was about decoying um, cats. And so I decided to stick with that theme and kind of go over trimming nails of a few different kind of popular pet species. Um, because it's something that some people don't really think about and it's kind of one of the minor aspects of their health, but still pretty important to take care of their feet and paws. So um, this is Bella. Um, she's in the presentation. So I did two demonstrations on my cat. I did Roger's nails and I did Bella's nails. And this is the new puppy, Charlie. I also did her nails, um, but I didn't videotape it. But I can talk about the difference between like cutting puppy's nails and her nails are black. Mm -hmm. Whereas Bella's nails are white and clear, so I'll talk about the difference. White is easier usually, isn't it? Yeah, a lot. Choice. You take the, the dog with the white nails if you're practicing. <laughs> so why trim their nails? Um, it prevents the nails from growing too long or getting ingrown nails. So you can see it down here. I think these mm -hmm. two are both pictures of the Duquois. Um, this is a cat and this is a dog. So you can see in both cases it's not great when it starts curling and digging into their skin. Um, this is a rabbit's foot and how long those nails are. It's not very comfortable. And it's a little bit different. Um, I did a bearded dragon for kind of a reptile look on it. And they don't necessarily need it for their health. It's more for a your preference kind of thing. Um, because they have little tiny sharp razor blade claws. And so they need them to grip. But they don't need them that long. So cutting them or filing them is good mostly for you. And that's the next point here. Protecting the person and belongings from damage. So we went over it in declawing, why you might want to declaw because cats can scratch at your furniture and all that stuff. So trimming can help with that. And then allowing animals to keep their nails and their natural behaviors. Um, disclaimer, don't <laughs> trim them if you're not comfortable with it. Um, it will hurt them if you do it too far back and they'll bleed and then that's just not good. You could cut yourself and no. So you can take them to a vet or a groomer to get it done. Um, and there are files also that you could do that are a little more safe for if you're afraid of doing it for yourself, but just don't do it if you don't think you can do it correctly. Good advice. Um, so tools you'll need, clippers, there are a bunch of different kinds, but these are the two that are mostly in here. I use these little scissor type ones for my cat. Um, those are, I've noticed, really preferred for a lot of people. You can really control yourself with those. Um, and a blanket or a towel, for my cat, I use the burrito method to cut his nails because um, he's still not uh, completely The burrito, trained. I, I didn't So the burrito method yeah. is when you lay out a blanket or a towel and you wrap them up <laughs> completely except for the one paw you're working on. Um, it helps them stay calm because of the pressure and it also keeps you safe from the rest of their paws. Um, and then styptic powder, that is to stop the bleeding if you do end up cutting too far. I've seen people use like baking soda too or flour um, just to help the clotting. If you don't have this and don't want to buy it, but that's the best thing you could possibly get for it. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because when you on the previous slide, I was thinking, I was wondering, I'm wondering if she's going to talk about astringents. That's really what this is, an astringent. I think help me spellers, A S T R I N G E N T, astringent. That's something that helps clot the blood, especially on a nail or anything. But that's what that really is. Is that um, does that tend to be a powder? Yeah. It's just like a powder, kind of like a flower. Because sometimes you can get them in like a lipstick kind of thing too, can't you? I use like cornstarch. Cornstarch, yeah. Okay. It, something. Any, I'm, I'm wondering what this really is made of. It'd be interesting to it's know. It's got like a dubbing agent in it, I believe. Okay, so maybe it has a little lidocaine or something in it too, maybe? Hmm. Okay. So first I did Roger. Um, people recommend that you trim a cat's nails every two to three weeks. Um, they're pretty frequent because they have that scratching behavior of sharpening their nails and shedding the husk of their nails. So they need a little more frequently than other animals. Um, this is a nice little diagram of how to cut it and how to hold the paw. So cats are different in that you have to push their nail out because it is retracted most of the time. Um, so you can kind of see it in my video. But this also shows the angle to cut the nail, which is kind of important because you can see how the little vein kind of comes down at an angle. So if you just cut straight, you're probably going to cut into that and that's how they bleed. So it's important to cut it at an angle also to keep it from cracking. Um, if you cut it the wrong way, it could crack and that could cause pain too. So the, this has a little guillotine tool which you can also use, but again, I use this one because it's easier to get at a good angle. You can move it more, it's a little more flexible and again, it's easier to control. Okay, so before can, you go on, point out where the blood vessel is again on that that's this little red piece. You're right talking here. about this whole thing in here? Yes. Okay. Because that's 
I'm not sure if it's that big, but it's definitely in that. Yeah, area. I think yeah. they exaggerated yeah, it for yeah, the picture's yeah. sake, for but it's definitely sake. just kind of that close to the right. end. So now we, I know if you're doing a, a clear nail, then it's pretty easy to see that pink blood down that far. Mm -hmm. How about a dark nail, a black one? How do you, do you just... So it depends on the nail. Some nails have a little gray undertone on them. That kind of shows, it's a good marker to show how short you can cut, um, but typically, you just kind of cut a little bit at a time until you're still seeing this kind of gray ring on the inside okay. and just go until you see the gray and then not anymore. Okay, okay. Gotcha. But uh, my dog, I didn't remember to record my new puppy's nails because okay. you would have seen that, but. So I'll play this short little clip I did of Roger. And he likes the head rubs to keep him calm. You can see me kind of pushing his nail out and getting that angle, and then I rub him after mm -hmm. every nail to keep him calm. It looks like you've done that before with him. Yeah. And it's the same for the back nails. I think he likes the back nails better, honestly. <laughs> see, he tried to pull. Yeah. And Is there sound at all? or? I heard a little... Yeah, he yelled at me a little bit, but yeah. that's about it. Oh, there we go. Did you do this for us? Yeah, Is so I, he needed his nails cut anyway, and then I was like, well, <laughs> since I have to do this, I might as well record it. Yeah, so that's great. cutting a cat's nails. Um, you could see me kind of just gently squeezing his paw. You don't want to squeeze too hard or else he'll freak out. But you have to squeeze it hard enough to get it out and kind of move the fur. He's a long-haired cat, so he's got a lot more fur in the way than a short-haired cat, but it's not too bad. Okay, so then I did Bella. So for a dog's nails, it's different from a cat because their nails are already out. So I have this nice little diagram over here where you can see the nail. Um, and again, it shows the blood vessel and the angle that you should cut it. It's about the same as a cat. Um, this dog does have black nails. So you can see in this picture, the little gray circle that I was talking about, the little white. So if you can't read it, it says trim only until you see the white inside of the nail with a small black dot in the center. If you don't see the white, you can cut a bit closer. Remember to take a small amount off each time or you will cut the quick. So that's a good indication for dogs with darker nails. Um, you'll see that my dog, Bella, has the white nails so you can see the pink inside so I don't have to worry too much. Um, but again, it's just being careful. So I'll play Bella's manicure. Now Bella is older and she's been trained to let me cut her nails so she's just on my lap on her back and it doesn't bother her at all. And you can see I'm using a guillotine tool for her just because it's what my mom had. Um, but again, she's trained, so it's not as hard to get it where it needs to be. And she's got her long fur, so I can move that out of the way. She looks like she needed a trimming. She did. They were really <laughs> long. I was like, Mom, seriously? And her dew claw is like a little curled, so I was like, it's a good thing I'm here. <laughs> and again, you did this for us. Yes, I did. So sweet. But she needed it, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did it for her, too. Yeah, you can see the dew claw is pretty curled up there. And that one's a little harder to get because of the curl. Yeah. It's hard to get the right angle, so... Yeah, excellent. So a, little, a little puppy. Okay, next is bunnies, which is something that a lot of people actually don't think about when you own a rabbit. You mostly think of having to like keep their teeth the right length mm -hmm. because they're continuously growing, but their nails, like I showed you at the beginning, are able to get pretty long. So um, I think the hardest part of rabbits is that they're a little more skittish, and so restraining them can be difficult. Um, so you can definitely do the burrito method, again, in a rabbit, or if they're trained and you get them to be kind of calm with treats and positive reinforcement, you can just hold them like this person did. Um, Theirs are also pretty frequent, turn about three to four weeks. I forgot to say for the dogs, they're about one to two months. Yeah, and I think it was I on think their, it was on their uh, text. So I so don't have a rabbit, my sister does, but she lives three hours away. So I found a nice little video that shows- Good firmly, you do not want to have the nail dangling off halfway. Be very careful not to cut the quick in the toenail. The quick is the end of life pink tissue in the nail bit and includes blood and nerves because doing so can cause pain to the rabbit and a bloody toenail. If the nail is too dark to see the quick clearly, shine a torch through the nail. Use the silhouette of the quick as a guide. <laughs> if the nail is too long, cut a little off at a time. This makes the experience more comfortable for the rabbit. 
So I was gonna run different videos specifically because of that. Um, that rabbit is in what's called a bunny trance. It was basically kind of scaring them to where they play dead. Um, so it's halfway right. I asked him. Yeah. I asked him was that a dead rabbit. So not recommended. I definitely researched that a bit. Okay. Um, that you know veterinarians don't recommend okay. scaring them until yeah. they play dead. Um, but I thought that was a possum <laughs> would do that. I've seen a possum. Play yeah. Well. So that's how they. Really? She decided to do that, but I okay. yeah. wouldn't. So you wouldn't recommend that, if, yeah? Because they think they're actually gonna die, you know. So that's oh my not gosh. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was a disclaimer. Never do that to a rabbit. Yeah, don't do that to to a rabbit. That's yeah. that's not nice. Okay. <laughs> and then I did an exotic one, feeder dragons. Some people have them. Um, <clears throat> some people don't trim their nails. I've seen a lot of people that do, just because they're pretty sharp. Um, if you do, all the people that I researched online decided to use this kind of clipper, but the baby size, um, because their nails are really small, like you just want to cut that little tiny piece off, um, because, so this is what it is, a big thing, and then there's the nerves and stuff back here that you don't want to get to, so it's literally just this, mm -hmm. and not too much, because then they lose their grip. So they like to climb, mm -hmm. you know, so if you oh, cut yeah. too much, then that's losing their natural behavior. And I did see in a video that if you're uncomfortable with cutting it because it is so small, some people use a slate stone to just file the nail down and that will work the exact same. So I also have a video on that. Is take that. Yeah, there's not much there, is there? Yeah, it's really small. But it's just enough to cut you up yeah, if you yeah, hold them yeah. a lot. Just make sure you're only getting that black part. questions or comments or other people with experiences surely out here somebody's done it somebody had a bad experience seen it badly done I'll let you point yeah um, well I know personally when my um, when we had just gotten our uh, new puppy like many years ago my dad was actually trying to trim his nails and um, or kind of like clip them shorter and I think he did go a little too far but yeah, and if it's not too bad, it'll stop bleeding by itself. But if you go quite a ways too far, then that astringent or some powder. And what was it? The uh, baking soda? Uh, cornstarch. Cornstarch as a backup. Yeah. 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 And puppies' nails tend to be a lot softer. They're really sharp, but they're a lot softer and easier to cut than an adult dog's nails. Mm -hmm. So it's oh. easier to kind of go oh. too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any interesting things? Um, I have a couple of little caveats, you know, I have two uh, border collies now, and um, part of the health maintenance on them, when they go in to get their puppy shots, this Friday is their third shot, by the way, um, Dr. Birch, my past student, Brittany, um, trims the nails as part of the health package, and the second time I was there, and she trimmed in the first time, because they came off the farm, they were just a week off the farm, the second time she goes, wow, did you trim these? And I go, no, and I'm trying to figure out why she would think that. And I go, oh, that's right. They spend a lot of time on cement because they're part of their pen is cement. And they're basically trimming their nails themselves, basically, because she goes, oh, here's a little one right here. And that was it. Here's another story that was fun. -y. Uh, I had a great Pyrenees, Monique, one time. Sometimes her picture shows up on the website. Beautiful dog. Lived to be 12, that's pretty good for a Great Pyrenees, 160 pounds. One day I came home from work, and that, that you know, I peeked out at five dogs one time. I don't recommend that, but uh, I came, and we usually have a dog pen, but it's like got double fencing because there's so many dogs sometimes. Anyway, Monique was like back in the corner and wouldn't come to me. And that's unusual because usually everybody crowded the gate and couldn't wait for me to get the gate open so they could have a bigger area to run. I'm going, Monique, what's wrong? And she just kind of looked at me, but stood totally still. And I'm going, okay, something happened. So I walked back to her, the other dogs are running around, and I walked back to her. Her back legs were locked together. If you're familiar with a Great Pyrenees, they have a double dewclaw on each back leg. They grew, the nails grew long enough 
that they, like, here's a nail here. They came like this, and then somehow she was walking, must have been just recently, and they locked. So her, like, handcuffs. <laughs> and I looked back there, and of course it didn't take long to get them up. I go, you need a trim, don't you? <laughs> she had locked her back too late. Now that, you can't make up that story. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. And, you know, I knew something was wrong, because usually she would run up and, you know, give me a kiss. And here her legs were, the double dew claws had locked each other. Okay.